Kevin, Andrew, the engineer of the Pizzaplex, was humming to himself while he prepared the parts and services for the night. For a unique event that recently happened more than originally expected. A light-hearted little thing just for the machines, specifically two of them. One was the daycare attendant, an important non-glamrock animatronic, who kept the toddlers and young children in the daycare entertained and taken care of. But he was also known to be a little twitchy. He was originally intended as a one-man show animatronic, yet three personalities combined within. Well, the problem came in form of Moon, sometimes called Moondrop, after the candy that was themed after him. He was too scary for the intended audience, and the play itself was too childish for anyone over a certain age, so the entire thing was scrapped. After some reprogramming, which caused even more screw-ups in the robot's brain, his son personality was put as the daycare worker, with two security guards equipped with tasers just in case he would truly go haywire. His third personality, Eclipse, was only meant to come out at the end of the theater play and was kept inactive. The other animatronic was Nurse Bendy, a sanitary animatronic that also had the ability and certification to give out over-the-counter fast brand painkillers and vitamin tablets. She was outwardly themed after the old baby animatronics with a more sleek and slender design. She had red hair made out of thick plastic, giving her the appearance of wearing dreadlocks. This was to avoid the hair being caught up between the seams of her animatronic shell and clogging up her servos. She usually wore her hair in a thick ponytail. Her nose was tipped in red, while having plus signs painted through her eyes, to avoid trouble with the Geneva Convention said crosses had a teal color rather than the more typical red. Beneath her chest cavity was a recently installed pill dispenser, allowing her to dispense her pills immediately through her fingertips like a pest dispenser. Additionally, her feet were made to appear like rollerblades, but in fact functioned like Roombas, and could suck up any small debris and lint by her simply moving through the pizza plex. She was also connected to the janitorial staff bots, allowing her to see through their eyes, as well as coordinate them, which increased the performance by roughly 20%. And what would these two animatronics do in parts and services together? It was called boyfriend time. It was observed that when the daycare attendant spent time with you, Nurse Bendy, he became much more docile, patient and friendly. This included his Moon personality as well. It was why Moon was finally allowed to continue his initial duty of naptime enforcer. Now, instead of creepily staying watch, he would even sit in a rocking chair and read from a fast book to read a fast fable of the fast kids exploring the fast world. As such, there was need to be. And this was all because of the reward they got for good behavior. Occasionally, parts and services would be set up for a night where the two of you were essentially locked into a room together. This was to not interfere with the daytime activities. It was essentially a virtual experience for the two animatronics. It was essentially a virtual experience for the two of you. A rudimentary virtual world accessed via a .exe program on Kevin's tablet. The preparations for boyfriend time were moving an additional animatronic work table into the protective dome of parts and services, rerouting of power from the daycare to parts and services to ensure functionality during scheduled blackouts, and lastly some server maintenance just to ensure that no data loss was occurring during the procedure. It was within the basic animatronic care clause in Kevin's contract, so sadly this didn't count as overtime. But Kevin liked doing this. He was fascinated by the animatronics AI. 
mostly due to Fazbear Entertainment's negligence, each Fazbear location had their own way of dealing with the shoddy copy-paste coding of the machines. But it was this shoddy programming that made him believe that some form of sentience was achieved. Probably by some lazy coder pasting the wrong code twice. Who knew? But he enjoyed the fact the machines had their own little personality quirks and needs. Besides, he only dealt with them one at a time, so there wasn't any chaos in the equation like noisy children or screaming Karens. <laughs> That's what the guards were for. Today's simulation. Hmm, Kevin pondered out loud. There were a few rudimentary worlds he could send the two machines for their little date. And today he chose... Grassland. You found yourself beneath the canopy of a thick, trunketed tree. Looking at your hands, they were missing their seams. You inhaled, and while not feeling lungs, you felt a certain strain in your chest regardless. It was familiar and comforting. You had been here before. Your vision became blurry and so you blinked, feeling the skin of your eyelids brush over your slimy eyeballs. And slowly you began touching your face. Skin. The feeling of your skin. Just as warm and soft as it was with the children you worked with daily. Except this was your own. Air escaped through your mouth in a pleased sigh before you rolled onto your chest. You used your arms to push yourself up until you were standing, a little wobbly as your feet no longer had their wheels. How strange, walking normally. In the virtual world of BoyfriendTime.exe, you took on a human appearance. So did the daycare attendant. Your hair was now loosely hanging down to your shoulders, no longer in dreadlocks, but just regular hair. And you were dressed in a thin white dress, just thick enough to show off your beautiful silhouette beneath, but still modest enough to not show any shameful parts of yourself. You had Caucasian skin without any blemishes, bumps or wrinkles, and your face was permanently painted to look like a clown just like your real-life mechanical counterpart. You took a few steps into the brightness of the day. It was warm, with a light breeze, quite pleasant. Looking up, you saw nothing but blue, and the green grass spreading out for all eternity, and you knew it did. Aside from this tree, there was nothing out there but randomly generated patches of grass. The tree standing upon a small hill, the only imperfection of the even dirt ground. As you stood there, feeling the melancholy of the plain's emptiness all throughout your being, a pair of arms suddenly interrupted your solitude. They wrapped around your body, tightly and comforting. You instantly recognized the breathing pattern and the clinginess. It was Moon. Guess who? He whispered into your ear, and you smiled. <laughs> I don't know. Playfully, you moved the tips of your fingers over his hand. Is it you, son? You felt Moon's breath trickle over your neck. I know you're trying to get on my nerves, Nurse Bendy. He whispered in response, but you could hear his teeth clench. I missed you. There was almost zero chance he got to naturally interact with Moon, as the daycare was closed during nap time. One of his hands found its way to your chin, and with a light pull he turned your head to face him. 
Moon in the digital world was lanky, dressed in the same clothes he wore in the real world. And despite his lankiness, he also had a well-rounded butt that was fun to squeeze. A moon mask was pulled up to cover up the upper half of his face, its strap covered by short, tightly kempt raven black hair, revealing thin lips and sharp teeth. After a few precious seconds of longingly looking at each other, you pursed your lips, allowing him to gently kiss you. His skin felt a little cool compared to the general warm atmosphere and your own hot lips. It was pleasant, and his grip was tight. The feeling of your body against his was an indescribable pleasure, especially since most of the time he spent in the endless void that was his standby face. For a moment, you separated your mouths, foreheads pressed against each other, longingly looking into each other's eyes. So, where's Sun? You asked, causing Moon's mouth to twitch up into a smirk. Already at the picnic? Hmm, why don't we join him? He exhaled through his mouth, his breath smelling like motor oil. Just a few more min- Oh, there you are! Uh, damn it! From behind the tree stepped Sun. Unlike Moon, who was lanky, Sun had a little more meat on his bones. While Moon was so thin he looked like a breeze could carry him away, Sun was healthy, with a few extra muscles and white, almost feminine hips. His sun mask was also pulled up, showing his lush red lips. He had the same hair as Moon, except it was a golden blonde. I set up everything! You separated from Moon, walking forward, while the other cursed to himself. Walking past the tree, you saw a red and white picnic cloth spread out, on it a basket and some plates, with fitting silverware. Sitting together in a triangle, it was Sun who first reached for the basket. Oh, I wonder what we get this time. It's always the same food, commented Moon. And yes, as expected, it were slices of fast bread deluxe pizza, as well as a thermos can of fast tea and a delicious smelling garlic and herb baguette. Told you. Doesn't matter, it's still tasty! Eating was interesting in the virtual world. You simply took one bite and, and the entire food in your hand would simply vanish out of your hand. Though you felt the satisfaction of actually having eaten the entire bite. It was convenient, though you wondered how chewing and swallowing felt for an actual human. Regardless of that, you still felt satisfactory tingles all throughout your body whenever you bit into a slice of the digital pizza. Meanwhile, Sun and Moon were bickering at each other. It was obvious to you that Moon was just a little cranky, still not over Sun's interruption earlier. <laughs> Maybe you'd give him some extra attention later. Though speaking of attention, Sun was showering you with it. He couldn't stop glancing at you, wiggling happily from side to side whenever your eyes met. Something his jealousy-prone counterpart thankfully didn't pick up on. As he was too busy ranting about yesterday's naptime children and how naughty they were and how much he wished he could punish them, but he wanted boyfriend time really desperately. It wasn't until later when the food was utterly devoured and the virtual sun began to set. And some semblance of silence came over the field. You, sun and moon had retreated from the picnic basket and blanket to beneath the tree, huddled together. Both of them were trying to snuggle up with you to get as much of your body in their grasp as they could. Sun was pushed up against your right, his hands cupping your chest and butt cheek, while Moon had his arms wrapped around your hip. They were both so needy. But there was one thing the three of you could still do, 
something that you had deep knowledge of as a nurse animatronic. And the first time you had boyfriend time together, you had loved telling them about it. You moved your head to look at Moon, giving him a soft peck on the mouth, and then turned towards Sun, giving him a light peck on the cheek too. And then you sat up. You could feel their hands sliding off of you as though it did. You could feel their hands lazily sliding off of your body as they made disappointed noises. Noises that quickly turned positive when they watched you unravel the knot on the back of your dress, taking hold of the shoulder straps and pulling them down. They gasped, but you knew that both of them would spend their entire boyfriend time with you just cuddling and never actually take the lead. They were too considerate. They were programmed to not react to your teasing or flirting, at least not in the way that you would have liked. They required consent for anything, so it was just easier to just offer yourself to them. You lie back against the tree, letting your two boyfriends fondle you, touch you, feel you. It was exciting, wonderful even. You wished you had a heart. It would surely race right now. The two men were absolutely in love with you, and you were absolutely in love with them. Your lips, your hands, your bodies. It was as if they were all melting together into a mass of pure pleasure. Moon was the first to be more daring. Just like before the picnic, he was more into the physical side of love, while Sun was more into the emotional side of it. Though, they both wore their desires on their sleeves. Neither of them would last long in keeping the clothes on. It was 6 a.m., and Kevin was returning to parts and services, yawning. Usually he came to the pizza plex around 12 p.m. and stayed until 6, but when it was boyfriend time night, well, he made an exception. He entered the maintenance room with a smirk, seeing the two seemingly asleep animatronics behind the glass of the protective dome. Ah, how cute. They were holding hands. He then wandered over to the computer, typing in the release commands for the simulation. Inside of it, you and your two lovers were deeply asleep. This was important to prevent confusion for mechanical selves upon waking up. And from one second to the next, boyfriend time was officially over. You and Sun opened your real eyes, and he squeezed your hand before shouting, That was fun! It was, you said. And he hugged you tightly. I'm sure Moon liked it too. Let's behave extra good towards our friends so we can go back as soon as possible. Thank you for watching my video until the very end and I would like to remind you to please like and subscribe and comment something down below. I read every comment you write to me and I try to re reply to them as often as I can. But before we say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely darling stewards who so graciously support my third tier membership. Husky HD 17 Hopeful, Castea Misery, Bree, Zoe, Ikea, Mystic Jade 111, Annabel A. Contreras, Giovanni Moriarty, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Bit Bit, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. Thank you so much for your continued support. And finally, I'd like to thank all of my lovely darling mates for also supporting me financially. I couldn't do this without you. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day and please remember to like and subscribe.